Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will be going to derive width of pulse for monostable multivibrator using operational amplifier. To understand this derivation, it is very compulsory that you will have to see my last video based on monostable multivibrator using operational amplifier, in which I have explained you complete working of monostable multivibrator using operational amplifier. See, in that working, I have explained you this circuit that is functioning as a monostable multivibrator. What is monostable multivibrator? Monostable multivibrator is having two states. One is stable state and second is quasi stable state. Here stable state is V plus. So output is having V plus that is stable state and quasi stable state that is V minus right. Stable state that changes by external triggering pulse. So you see here we give external triggering by negative going pulse. By this pulse output is having change in stable state to quasi stable state. So output changes from plus V to minus V. So from this interval onwards monostable multivibrator that is staying in quasi stable state. But if you observe this quasi stable state then this quasi stable state that changes automatically means from minus V to plus V happens automatically and that happens after time duration T. So here we are dealing with to derive width of this time period T. To understand derivation of time period T you need to understand what is the voltage across capacitor in the circuit. Here see this capacitor that is having initial voltage VD that is diode forward bias voltage. After that we give negative going pulse over here. Once you give negative going pulse, output is having minus V voltage from plus V voltage. So that minus V voltage that is charging this capacitor. And as soon as this capacitor is getting charged to the value which is beyond V2, there is a transition from minus V to plus V. Right. So first of all you need to understand what is voltage across capacitor over here. Let me explain you. See voltage across capacitor over here that is Vc and that is equals to initial voltage into e to the power minus T by Rfc. Why I am writing Rfc? The reason is this capacitor, this capacitor that is getting charged via resistance Rf. Right. So time constant that is Rf into C. So here capacitor voltage that is initial voltage into e to the power minus t by rfc plus final voltage vf into 1 minus e to the power minus t by rf into c right now here let me note down all the voltages so that we can derive width of pulse see here vc that is a voltage after which transition happens. So this VC voltage, VC voltage if it is reaching to this point at that time there is a transition from minus V to plus V. So what has to be this V2 voltage? That V2 voltage that is minus V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Right. The reason is as if VC that goes below this V2 voltage at that time there is a transition. So this VC voltage here that will be minus V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2 after which transition will happen. Now what is this V0 voltage? This V0 voltage that is initial voltage across capacitor. That initial voltage is diode forward bias voltage VD that is 0.7 volt in case of diode is of silicon. This value is very small compared to this voltage of V. The reason is voltage V that is biasing voltage of this open. Generally it will be there around 15 voltage right. So 15 is way greater compared to 0.7 voltage right. Now what is this voltage VF? This VF that is the final voltage by which capacitor is getting charged. You see capacitor over here 
that is getting charged by minus V voltage as output is minus V. Right, you see, output is minus V. So by this minus V voltage, this capacitor that is getting charged over here. So final voltage, this VF that is final voltage, that is minus V. Now let us substitute all the values in this equation. So you will be observing now this Vc that is minus V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. This V0 that is Vd into e to the power minus T by Rfc and this Vf that is minus V voltage into 1 minus e to the power minus T by Rf into C. Right. Now here see this Vd that is way lower compared to this voltage V. So let us ignore this voltage Vd. So if you neglect Vd then your equation that will reduce to these two terms only. Now see in this equation we can cancel out these terms this minus V and this minus V. Right. Now let us further simplify this. So here I will be taking this term on other side. So e to the power minus t by Rf into C that is equals to 1 minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2. If you take LCM over here then this will be R1 plus R2 minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So this R1 will get cancelled over here and you will be having R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now we can take natural log at both of the side. So we will be having further simplification. So you see ln e to the power minus t by Rf into C that is equals to ln of R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now see with natural log this power will come in front and ln of e that is equals to 1. So you can say minus t by rf into c that is equals to natural log of r2 divided by r1 plus r2. Right. Now see here we have negative sign. Right. So if you multiply negative sign over here in that case natural log is having characteristic that will be reversing this term. So you see now this time duration t that is equals to rf into c and inside natural log now we will be having r1 plus r2 divided by r2. We are taking this negative sign inside so it will come in power. So power is to minus 1 means this term that is getting reverse. Right. So if you see this term that is t that is rf into c into this R2 by R2 that is equals to 1 plus R1 by R2 that is how we will be having equation. Now here there are few basic things that you can assume like as if I say R1 is equals to R2 then ln of 1 plus 1 will be there. Right. So here time duration for width of pulse that is Rf into C ln2 ln2 is 0 0.693 right so basic equation that is this in which we are assuming the fact that r1 is equals to r2 in that situation width of pulse that is equals to 0.693 rfc right so that is how one can have calculation of width of pulse for monostable multi vibrator so here there are few basic things that you need to understand see initial voltage across capacitor is vd Final voltage can go up to V2 that V2 is minus V into R1 divided by R1 plus R2 and that is what we are substituting over here and this final voltage of capacitor that is getting charged by voltage minus V that is my output right and based on these facts we can substitute the values and we can simplify the equation up to this where as if you consider R1 and R2 to be same in that case width of pulse for monostable multi vibrator that will be 0.693 into RFC. I hope you have understood all those things. Still if anything that you would like to share, please note it down in the comment section. I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.